Did you know that in God of War Ragnarok, the game is dropping several hints about Tyr's true identity? Throughout various scenes and moments, if you pay attention, you can sense that something odd is happening. Obviously, this video has spoilers, in case you haven't played Ragnarok yet. Now, after a few hours of gameplay, we learn that Tyr has always been Odin, using one of his tricks to make us believe that we always had the real Tyr by our side, when in fact it was the opposite, and a ruse planned from the beginning to control us. Before moving on to the stronger points, which start to unveil his true intentions, I want to say that throughout the story, Tyr acts very strangely, that's a fact, giving us menacing looks and behaving in a very peculiar and cowardly manner in many scenes. He sells us the idea that he is no longer who he was in the past, and that no matter how much Atreus tries to convince him otherwise, he wants to avoid conflicts at all costs. And as much as you might buy into this theory at the beginning, as he accompanies us on our journey, the mask gradually falls, revealing his true face, and later leading to the events we all know. But then, what are these clues that the game gives us about Tyre's true identity? Let's start first when we talk to Durlin for the first time. In this scene, it's impossible not to feel the situation is a bit strange. I mean, he knows exactly where Tyr is located. Considering this village and all the dwarves are subdued by Odin, it seems odd to think it was all so easy, and even more so that Durlin knew exactly where Tyr was imprisoned. The thing is that Odin knows Durlin's true intentions and his rebellious ideology, so he knew how to manipulate him to later lead Kratos and Atreus to the false Tyr's whereabouts, weaving his master plan further. But it doesn't end there. The story showed us how capable Odin is of this and much more. He could be called the master manipulator, as even the first time he visits our home, he applies reverse psychology on Atreus, telling him to abandon his search for Tyr, making it clear there was nothing to find, further fueling his intent to search. This reveals a lot about Odin's manipulative and calculating personality. Some say that the prison where we found the false tire, after exploring the mines, was very poorly secured, with very basic access and security, and therefore being another clue regarding his true identity. And as much as this could be a valid point, I don't consider such a big clue either. But well, that opinion is up to each one. What is certain is that once we rescue Tyr, and we reach this mural with Groa's prophecies later in the story, you can see a clear look of contempt on Tyr's face when he finds out that Atreus could be the champion, in addition to seeing that the other realms were not going to be destroyed in Ragnarok as he thought, but rather only Asgard. Even if you pay attention, you can see how he pushes Atreus away when he approaches the mural. As I tell you, strange behaviors that hint at something fishy. As if that were not enough, when we first find Tyr in the prison, he knows in great detail the identity of Kratos, when in reality, the real Tyr had only heard certain stories and rumors about him, being in reality Odin himself, who is speaking through the false god, as he has indeed investigated and knows very well Kratos and his past, as he makes known many times. Another interesting clue in some cinematics are Tyr's comments to Atreus, calling him Loki or Champion, knowing that Kratos doesn't like this at all, trying to confront each other at every turn. Not to mention that throughout the story, Tyr does nothing but put obstacles in our path, and the help from him is practically zero, being more of a hindrance than an advantage when we plan our next moves. Another clue can be seen in Tyr's reaction upon learning that the dwarves stole the Robnin ring, which by the way is of great value to Odin, and which was previously a gift to him from the same dwarves. The false Tyr, in addition to showing his true face in certain reactions and behaviors, also made a mistake by calling Freya as Frigg, being Odin the only one who called her that way causing Freya to get a bit upset, but not too suspicious of him. However, it turns out that the nickname Frigg was a thing of Odin, meaning beloved, and that after a while became a means for Odin to manipulate Freya's achievements, making them known as the work of Frigg and not of her own, discrediting her. All this, along with other young cooperative behaviors and comments about Loki and the champion, makes the mask of this false tear start to fall. And speaking of masks, don't forget the suspicious interest of the false tear regarding the mask that Atreus was trying to decipher, showing us his double intentions behind it. Obviously, suspicions are confirmed at the end, when Brock discovers it, accusing Tyr that his behaviors didn't make much sense, which makes him finally show his true face and lose patience, revealing that he was always Odin. Evidently, the game knows how to hide the true identity of this false Tyr, but once you finish the story and start to see these details again, it seems that the game was always telling you to your face that this tier is a fraud, leaving small clues throughout the story. I want to clarify that later on, if we continue exploring, we can find the real tier, locked in an ancient prison in a side quest, which ends up confirming that Tyr didn't really know who Kratos was, and that indeed, he is the true god, who Odin had previously locked up there. 
Tyre's appearances don't end there, as in the new DLC, we find out that it was the real Tyr who sent us to search for Valhalla, to discover our true self, facing our past as the ghost of Sparta, to overcome it and become the god of hope. I say all this because I like that they gave that extra prominence to the character, especially after we only had a small appearance in this abandoned prison, where we didn't talk much with him. And going back to God of War Ragnarok, I thought the plot twist of the false tear was very good. And of course, it serves to give the story that extra push it needs to provoke Ragnarok. What do you think? Did you also have certain suspicions about Tyr throughout the story? Or did you completely miss his true identity? In my case, as I say, I had certain suspicions, but there's no denying that Odin knows how to manipulate things. Let me know in the comments. If you've made it to the end, I truly thank you. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to let me know you want more content like this. Looking forward to catching up with you in the next video. Till next time.